now it's going to work. All right. Okay, so today I actually want to kind of start with where we left off on Friday. <clears throat> so it kind of, what we're doing today kind of makes sense. And so with that, we had this thinking map here, which talked about um, we were do on all of them. We were doing, you know, the probability of something, the proportion of observation, finding that percent of data. And that was so we were measuring how much you data you had under the curve at a certain point. OK, so then we learned um, whenever we're doing any of that, we're using our norm CDF on our calculator. OK, so then a real quick check. We could look here at your homework and see how you did on those a uh, few problems that I had asked you to do. So on page 12, you had this number one through five. So you can check these numbers real quick. I don't care if you write it as a decimal or a percent. It's the same. 0 0.903 for the second one, the third one, 0 0.1089, the fourth one, 0 0.1465, and the fifth one, 0 0.0441. I go to four decimal places on these areas so that when you turn it into percent, the percent has got two decimal places. Okay, now, then we went down to 12 through um, 14, and you might have answers a slight bit different than mine if you rounded your Z scores to two decimals, and I'm fine with that. Z scores to two decimals, area to four. So see, if you had taken this z-score here and here and maybe rounded those, you might have gotten something a slight bit different over here with the area, okay? But these were different because you had to turn them into z-scores to be able to get those areas. All right, and then I'm not going to have you do the other parts of these. We'll just go on from there. Okay, any questions on those problems that you guys did on Friday? Look good on that? Okay. All right, so now we'll actually go in your notes backwards one page or go in your packet backwards to this page 11. And we're going to start here on this top left slide and go through these problems with this new idea that we're doing. So what we have is this going on. So I want to remind you of this problem because we had started this on Friday. So remember, we had this pro we had a husband and wife team, and they were at a company. They're in different departments. Okay, so for example, this was the husband's mean and the husband's standard deviation, and then here was his salary, which gave him a Z score of 1.5. Okay, so with that Z score of 1.5, I want you to um, see if you can't determine, so compute, and if you don't have your calculator, make sure you get one of those, his percentile. So what percentage of his department was he higher than? Okay, so do that now real quick. Find his percentile. That's gonna be your lower area, area below. So you're norm CDFing from negative infinity up to the z-score. What number do we use to simulate negative infinity? Okay, negative 99. All right, so you got that going on. You put that in there. Okay, so we found what percentile is he in? So he's in the 93rd percentile because he's higher than 93.32% of his peers or his coworkers. Now, let's see where the wife, she was actually, she had a different salary, um, but because she had a different mean and standard deviation, her uh, relative position, her Z-score was 1.25. What percentile is she in? So, right, if we did that same thing, that norm CDF from our negative 99 up to her Z score, then we got 89.94%, or wait, 89.44%, okay? All right, but here's the question, or here, here's what's happening. This is asking a question, and I want you to uh, think in your mind what it really is asking, because I don't want to translate it for you. I want you to think, what is this really asking it says what would the wife need to earn to match her husband's relative position ok 
Okay, so let's go with the odds, telling the evens real quick. Try that. Go around. What is that really saying? What is that really saying? What's your thought? Um, that, so she, like, to match the amount of standard deviations she has from the mean. So she wants to be 1.5 standard deviations away. Gotcha. Very good. Correct. All right. Let's see how we did. Odds told the evens. So evens. Miriam, who's even over there? What do you think? Same percentile. Very good. We want her, she and her husband to both be at the 93rd percentile as opposed to where she currently is at the 89th percentile. Good. So here is how that then set up. We are, you know, using that Z-score formula. And so in using the Z-score formula, we want to set here's her mean and her standard deviation and what is her salary so that she's in that same percentile. Okay, so algebraically, I just, you know, we haven't done algebra a whole lot this year, so solve that real quickly. So I know you've got those skills down. All right, so what does her salary need to be? I got $16.20 for her to be in the 93rd percentile in her department. Okay, so that's where her hourly rate needs to be. All right, now we're going to have a different question. The husband says, whoa, the wife's at 93, the 93rd percentile, so let's see, I better, I better beef it up here and get stronger on that. So I'm going to be in the 95th percentile. If you're going to be in the 93rd, I want to be in the 95th. So... When, if that's the case, then he's no longer going to be at 1.5 standard deviations up anymore. We, he, let's see, I think I drew a picture of this. So he, who currently at 1.5 standard deviations up, needs to be somewhere, what? To be in the a bigger, a higher percentile, what's happening to his Z-score? Good. It needs to be higher as well. So instead of having 93% below him, he wants to have 95% below him. Okay. So when we did our little song online, then it was this situation, and I'm not going to actually play it. But we had that song where we did the X minus the mean over the standard deviation. And then when we got to the second little phrase, it said inverse norm of the area below is the Z at that spot. I'm going to play this, but I don't know. I don't think it necessarily plays on the recording, but I'll just go ahead and play it anyway. Here we go. X minus the mean over the standard deviation. Oh. Okay, okay, sorry, I just realized I hear it, but <laughs> y'all don't. Okay, so that didn't work so well. Yeah, okay, sorry, never mind. So sorry, you don't get the actual, the real deal. You have to have just me sing it to you. Okay, so uh, when it gets to the next section here, let me see if I can get some words there. So we've got inverse norm of the area below, inverse norm of the area below, inverse norm of the area below is the Z at that spot. OK, so that is the backwards way to get that Z-score. And so that's how we're going to come up with our Z-score here. So to get this, we're going to do our little inverse norm of the area below, which is 0.95. <clears throat> and so let's show you how to do that in your calculator. I will tell you that when we see... Let's see here. 
There are two different ways your calculator will show it. One way, it'll show it like this, inverse norm, and we do put that area below and you write it as a decimal. Now the other way that the calculator shows it is like this. And this is if you have that updated operating system, inverse norm, and we want to put this area below here, still leave this mean and standard deviation at 0 and 1. Now, as any, it is located still under that second VARS. So do second VARS, number 3 is your inverse norm. Does anybody have the left, center, or the right? Okay, if your calculator has the left, center, and right option, then you're going to have some other features that you could use that might make it easier for you later. But for now, because I'm going to talk about the, the same way with everybody, y'all stay left. Always do left because I'm doing inverse norm of the area below. That's the left side, okay? All right, so is the Z at that spot? And so when we come up with that inverse norm of the area below, is that 1.6449, okay? Issues on finding that there. Okay, so once we have that then in our calculator, See, no longer, we don't want him to be in the same relative position of 1.5. Um, the chart, by the way, is not quite as accurate as the calculator. So if you looked at it on the chart, it would come out to be 1.65. That's why this slide here shows 1.65, even though on our calculator we technically round it to 1.64. Let's go ahead and do this. This is his mean, and this is his standard deviation, and the question is, what should his salary now be in order to be at a z-score of 1.65, which is the 95th percentile? So solve that right there. I'll let you do the algebra. Is it 1478? All right. So if he wants to be at the 95th percentile, he's going to be at $14.78. Okay. Questions there. All right. So the idea is we weren't finding the probability or the percent or the proportion. That's your norm CDF. We were kind of going backwards. We were told the probability or proportion or percent, and we had to find the z-score. So we were going in a backwards motion. So here are some problems that I want us to take a look at and see if we can't use these different versions of information given to us to solve for the given height or solve for the height at once. All right, here we go. The Beanstalk Club is limited to women and men who are very tall. If women's heights have a mean of 63.6 .6 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5, so that's just all women, not the Beanstalk Club women, find the heights for the following chapters. <clears throat> so we got the Travis County chapter, the Austin chapter, and the Central Texas chapter. They have different rules for you to be allowed in their club. Okay, so the Travis County rule says you have, the women have to be taller than 1.75 standard deviations above the mean. Okay. The Austin chapter wants to take women only in the top 8%. So that's the top 8%. And so, and then this one's the 88th percentile. So I will give you a little hint on some of these. If you have to be 1.75 standard deviations above the mean, really what is that saying that what's that 1.75 is the value of what? Good, that's your Z score. So you say, okay, Z is 1.75, so then you can set up your little formula and solve for the height, the X value. That's your context, okay? So I'm going to let you go through that. And I'll kind of let you look at these hints as you're working. Here's just some hints.
Might just be all messed up. Okay, we'll try that. Uh, yeah, it says it, but I don't. Well, I'll have to go back and see if it really works. Okay, so let's let's see what's happening. Um, number one mistake that I see for well, a couple things on problem number one. You could do it two ways. I mean, and it kind of depends on how does your brain work. Do you think like, um, you know, I just need a formula to plug it into, and that's this what I have here in purple. There's your z-score, 1.75, and that equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation, and then you sol solve algebraically. But some people don't like that. Some people like to think common sense where they say, oh, here's the mean of 63.6, and I want to go up. 1.75 of those standard deviations. That's what this is, the mean plus 1.75 standard deviations. Regardless of how you think of it, you get that in, in order to be in the Travis County Beanstalk Club, you had to be 67.98 inches tall, okay, as a woman. Now, here is what's going on with this second one. So here we see that um, we've got this situation where we have the top 8%. So, but to get the z-score, you have to do inverse norm of the area below. And so inverse norm of the area below, well, how much area is below that z-score if 8% is above it? 92, because those two areas total 100%. So this is the bottom 92%. So to get this z-score, I had to do inverse norm of 0.92. Now, if you happen to have one of those calculators that has left, right, and center, you can do inverse norm of 0.92 and you put left on it. But guess what, you people who have the other calculator? If you did inverse norm of 0.08 and you went to write, that will give you the same z-score. So if you have one of those operating systems that's updated, then you can do that. You have to just pay attention to upper, is it the right or to the left? Okay, so these two would give you equivalent. Now, here's a mistake I see. Here's a common mistake. It was so common, I even made a song about it last year, but I'll, show, I'll play it for you all tomorrow since it's, it wouldn't show up on the recording anyway. This percent is not the z-score, nor is it the 0.92. So regardless, don't you dare go like this, 0.92 equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. That is bad. Percent is not the z. It goes to the champion song or something like, percent is not the Z. It's not the Z. Use the percent to get the Z. Use the percent to get the Z. Use area below as the percent. Okay, so when we do that, inverse norm of 0.92 is a Z-score of 1.41. That's how we set up our formula to get a height of 67.11 inches. Okay, and finally, the last clue was 88 percentile. Tell me about 88 percentile. That is the what, top or bottom? That's the bottom. So since 88 percentile is indeed this bottom area, then we can go ahead and just do inverse norm of 0.88, and that will give us the z-score at that spot of 1.17. So when we come on over here, we can then solve it and get our height of 66.54 inches. All right, questions there. So they kind of gave you information in three different formats, all ways to solve for the unknown height. All right, moving on. So we are not gonna do any more problems on the homework here. We'll just scoot on past it and head on over to the notes. Page 15, page 15. All right, so with that being said, I want you to do four, five, four and five and six. I think you can maybe try these. I'm gonna draw pictures of what's happening, but you try these on your own. See if you can't find these Z-scores.
So here's a little hint for you on number six. Your middle 20%. Middle 20%, you will have a z-score on each side, okay? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I believe so, yep. Yep. All right, so let's see what's happening on number six. If this is the mean here, of course, in the middle, and you have 20% around the mean, how much is on either side of it? So this is 10% on the left and 10% on the right. So then that technically means this, this left-hand Z score is above how much area? That's the key. How much is that area there? 40%. Okay, so this area I've shaded in black is 40% up to that spot right there. So that first Z score is going to be your inverse norm of 0.40. And that is negative, which makes sense it's negative because it is to the left of the mean. So negative 0.25 is one z-score, is the left-hand z-score. Okay. Now, if I was to compute this upper z-score, what? how much area is it above? 60. So you could say inverse norm of 0.6. 0.60, and guess what you get? Positive 0.25. So technically, if you are familiar with the symmetry of the normal model, and you be in 10% on either side of it, you wouldn't have to compute that second one. You could say, oh, I know this one is 10% below, and that's negative 0.25. So 10% above is going to be positive 0.25, okay? So I want you to understand those situations and you understand the symmetry of it. Okay, good deal, moving on. So here comes this number seven. And so now we just start all into the applications. So the first thing I want you to do as you go through this application problem is read it and fill in I always start an application problem with these four things on the side. So I start seeing what do I have and what do I need. Okay, so fill that in. All right, so if 8 is the mean and 0.5 is the standard deviation, what is the 6.9? That is the X. That is the context value of the item that you are dealing with. So I want to find the location of the 6.9. Okay, I want to find the location. Now, I know it's going to be a negative because I know it's to the left of the 8. All right, so take a look. Here is a key word. What does this indicate to you? Probability. That should jar and signal something to you. It should signal this. I want to find a probability. I want to find the area under the curve. It asked me to go less than. So I'm going to use norm CDF on my calculator and do the area below. Okay, so that's what all that word probability does for you. If you saw proportion of observations or percent of data, it should trigger this visual here. Okay, so because of that, I know I'm going to have to do norm CDF. All right, so what do I need to do then with my little 6.9? Get a what? Z-score, okay. 
So I'm going to do this. That z score is negative 2.2. Now, I do not make the rules to the game. I just teach you how to play it. And I'm going to tell you that um, before, let's see, this past summer, the summer before this last one, I learned that if my students, when they write, they have to show the work for the z-score formula, which we always did. So that wasn't an issue. But furthermore, if you do not even write z equals, you will lose a point of credit out of four. That's a lot because what happens is this, the fact that you are writing Z equals is indicating to the reader that you are using the normal model computation as opposed to other things we use this year, such as T scores and chi squared values. So Z equals is indicating that this is a normal model problem and that's why actually writing Z equals and doing your math is so important. Okay, I don't write the rules. I just tell you how and why we use them. Okay, so once you do that, then once you have your z-score, how do you get this area below? So your norm CDFing from negative 99 up to negative 2.2. Writing this calculator speak is not required. You know, writing that z-score formula is. Writing this calculator speak is not. All right, and the last thing I want to show you is, well, when you got your answer, was it 0 0.0139? Okay, so the last thing I want to show you that I did not show you on Friday is another type of notation. It's the, anytime we have the P's, P's the pro proportion of observations, percent, or the probability, I want you to write your answer like this. Do a capital P, so this is the probability or the percent of observations or the proportion of data that has a z-score less than negative 2.2 and that equals and then you can write the decimal or fraction or percent whatever however you like to do it so I'm gonna put it like that doesn't matter this is how you want to write a final answer anytime it's one of the probability, proportion, percent problems. Probability, proportion, percent problems. So in context, what is that saying? There you go, right here. It's the probability that you get a pizza that has 6.9 ounces or less cheese on it. So 1.39% of the pizzas have 6.9 ounces or less of cheese. You're getting ripped off 1.39% of the time, okay? All right, next. So start off this next one. Always start your little side things. FYI, the mean and standard deviation are the same. And I'm highlighting a very important part of this problem. So evens, to, I think that's where we are too, even though I just did another odd. <laughs> odds get so chipped off because it's like, I need to keep track. This thing lands on odds so often. <laughs> and there it goes even. Okay, whatever. All right. So evens, tell the odds what that three standard deviations below the means means. Throw three standard deviations below the mean means. What do you think? Well, the standard deviation is just how far away it is from the mean. Yes. So yeah, so it's just going to be like three below and then three above. Yes. So you're going to have three of these yeah. below the mean. And that's what a z-score is. Is The z-score is how many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. So therefore, it's indicating that so therefore, what do we have going on? Let's see. Evens told the odds. So the odds tell me. Eva, who's odd back there? Michael, what you got? What's this negative three standard deviations below the mean mean? 
Hmm. Okay, gotcha. So I hear what he's doing. He says it's 1.5 below. So he's thinking common sense, which is good. So he's going minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 0.5. Okay, good deal. According to what I have over here on the left, and according to that definition, what's another thing, or what is three standard deviations below the mean called? It is extreme outlier. It's your Z score. Your Z score is negative three, because a Z score is the number of standard deviations above if it's positive, negative if it's below. Okay, so that's what I was going for. So, absolutely, I like this common sense method, 8 minus 3 of those standard deviations. So, you're going to be at 6.5 ounces. So, that's one way you could show work and get credit on this problem. And, of course, the other way, so here's the two ways. Choice, you know, first choice or second choice. One of those two ways would have to be shown to get credit. Okay? The second one, I think, is the more common sense, 8 minus 3 standard deviations. And the top one is the formula way. So if you're the formula person, then the top way is your method. But you had to know Z was negative 3. All right. Very good. Moving on to our last one here. I'm not going to have you do number 10, but we're going to do number 9. So let's go ahead, start this problem, number 9, with our good old menu of items over here on this side. Start that and fill it in. So what's this 1424 and 5260? Yeah, those are the X values. Ding, ding, ding. Those are the context values of those mobile homes or whatever. So you have two X's. Therefore, you will get what Z scores? Two Z scores. You have to show Z-score work, and I have it written on this next thing here. There it is. Here's your X minus the mean over the standard deviation, X minus the mean over the standard deviation. You had to show both of those things right there, including the Z equals. I don't make the rules. I just teach you how to play by them. Z equals the X minus the mean over the standard deviation. And so you have two Z scores, negative two and 1.39. All right, so negative two and 1.39. So tell me, this question says, what percentage of observations, what should that trigger to you? The thinking map that asks for the percentage of data. I want to find the area under the curve. Thank you. And then it asked me between two items. So that's here, the middle area between the lower Z score and the upper Z score. So let's see here. So when I actually do the calculator thing, it looked like this, the norm CDF from negative 2 to positive 1.39.
And I think that was 0 0.89, what, 49, okay, so 0.9 something. So that equaled 0 0.895. So now, remember these P1s have to have our special notation. Okay, so let's do that. So I want to find the probability or the proportion of observations. That's my capital P. <clears throat> and I want a Z-score in between negative 2 and positive 1.39. And that equaled 89.5%. But there's something missing here. What do you think needs to go in here in these parentheses as well? My inequality signs, they will look like this. They point to the smaller direction. So I want the Z's in between negative 2 and 1.39. And that equals 89.5%. You can write it, you can write this as a decimal or a fraction or a percent. Any are totally acceptable. Okay? All right. So that context application, I mean, that's where it has to be. But in your homework, I do have some basic little questions. So your assignment, so your homework is pages 16 and 17, numbers 11 through 14. And the good thing is, is that we don't add anything new tomorrow. It's just going to be continued practice on this and letting this stuff sink in because this is a lot of stuff and a lot of this way, that way. What is it? You know, what information is it giving me? Okay. All right.